Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we are going to be finishing up with this quacky team today in our Road to Ranked Roulette series. We start off the week with a team very similar to this. We had a Wigglytuff and a Luger in there. We've activated only two buttons this week, and you know what? I'm going to just say it now that I'm not going to activate any more going into today's episode. I'm going to stick with this squad and see if we can finish positive. It's a little bit of a challenge for us, but I feel like the Azumarill warranted enough to just have one more chance in today's episode along with that Kyogre and the rest of the team as always the team is down in the description below there is a roll paste poker paste check out the details and try the team out if you'd like a little bit of fun but without further ado let's get into it today we are gonna we're gonna be good we're gonna do it we're gonna win we're gonna finish six and four we're four and four at the minute um so i feel good about today let's kick off with necrozma version two and as always my friends if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and uh, do leave your comments let me know what your thoughts are on the team this week and make sure that you do go over to our community section of the channel and vote for nominations for Pokemon to come out the wheel next week because we'll be doing another team, brand new team next week. But we've got a first opponent playing a QR code team. Ah, very familiar one. Let's see if we can rise to the challenge of this one today. So my first opponent of the episode is running a Incineroar, a Landorus, a Tapu Fini, a Moongus, Xerneas and Rayquaza. Like I said, it's a QR code team. Um, I'm not too familiar with this one, but I do know this archetype quite well. It is an X-Ray combination. It's got all the support there. Double Intimidate from the Incineroar and the Landorus. You've got the ground typing that really does help the Xerneas out against those pesky steel types, none of which we have though, unfortunately. Uh, Tapu Fini there for support. And then you've got the Amoongus there for the Trick Room deterrent as well. Something that we aren't really going to appreciate too much in this match. So, ooh, I think we need Intimidate from our top. Specifically for the Landorus and the Rayquaza. Leaving them unchecked is just never a good idea, to be honest. Um, do we bring... What else do we bring? We need a way to get rid of the Incineroar. I mean, top Kyogre is not bad as a lead, to be honest. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Um, and I think... Do, would Azumarill be alright here? Probably not so good. Uh, Lorantis wouldn't be bad, to be honest. Um, it doesn't like Rayquaza like one little bit. Uh, Necrozma and Lorantis could be a good option in the back. Um, but it looks like it might be... It might be the Volcarona. It may be Volcarona. Just not clicking in quick enough. I've got that Friday feeling. I'm just, I'm just too worried about... <laughs> Thinking about everything far too much before clicking in. But regardless if it is Volcarona, it gives us a way to get rid of Xerneas. Particularly with that that well when we do need to watch out for the Red Quasar. But we have got the Sash on there. And if it is Lorantis, we've got a nice way to set Trick Room up and deal with stuff like Tapafini and Incineroar uh, going forward. So we are going to see the Red Quasar and the Incineroar come out for my opponent. The big thing here for us is that we get the Intimidate off onto that Red Quasar, which we've already said many a time is the most important thing for us and why we've brought the hit on top here also getting on to the incineral is quite useful just to to reduce the attack damage there um and we'll see our kyogre primal revert it's uh, weather activate but it'll be sooner overwritten by the requires or anyway so that's something that we need to keep in mind but it's a good check for incineral and does help protect our dawn wings no problem that you've got lurking in the back uh, you've got to imagine my opponent probably has xerneas and Probably a Moongus, I would say, and the other two, but we'll go for a, a nice and easy fake out into the Rayquaza here with uh, him on top. Um, and I'm just going to go for a Water Spout, to be honest. Because if the Incineroar doesn't fake us out, then we punish it, or punish whatever comes in for it, but I expect it to, uh, to just trade fake outs here. I think that makes the most sense. Is the Rayquaza? It is going to Mega Evolve. Um, I wonder if it's banded as well. That's always the question. It's always a question I do ask. I wonder if the Rayquaza is banded. Uh, it could be sashed as well. Also a common item. Not so common as much as it was early in the format, but uh, still a viable option here. And we do just see. Uh, ooh! That's surprising. You're faking out our faker. You'd never fake out a fake out user. It's never the way to go. Um, we'll get Dawn Wings onto the field. We're going to get a free water spot off, which is pretty nice. It's not going to be in the rain, but it should still do a nice chunk to both of these Pokemon. 
um, and uh, by faking out a hit on top we've got that Intimidate to bring back in on the Rayquaza and just to get a little bit more damage, pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar which is pretty huge for us here, uh, a critical hit, I don't know if that would have taken it down, uh, it probably may have survived, may have done, um, but we do pick up the knockout and get a nice chunk of damage onto that Rayquaza as well, so indicating that it's not Assault Fest we can kind of summarise that from the damage that we've just done. Um, and that turn really backfiring for my opponent uh, there, which is a little bit unfortunate. And I think unless you're really confident with your, your Incineroar's speed, then you, you I don't think you can risk going for that um, that play there. Uh, okay, the Tapu Fini coming in changes some of the dynamics, I feel, for this. Because I feel like I can go for the Trick Room now with, with Dawn Wings. And uh, I'm going to bring in him on top. Just get another Intimidate onto the Rayquaza. Uh, protect our Dawn Wings a little bit more than what it is at the moment. Um, if the Rayquaza could have Crunch, it's definitely an option there. But I think because the Amoongus was an issue before the Misty Terrain comes onto the field, if the Amoongus is in the back, it's unlikely to be in the back, honestly, because I think it's definitely going to be that Xerneas. Um, the Misty Terrain kind of alleviates that quite a lot. We are going to see a Dragon Ascent come out from the Rayquaza. It's going to be into our Dawn Wings. Um, but double intimidated, it's not going to be hitting as hard, um, and we do take that pretty comfortably for respe all respect of a Dragon Ascent and the Icy Wind there, which is just going to help us even more uh, with our, uh, our speed tiering here. Um, so, I think this next turn, as we get the Trick Room up, we're... I th yeah, I'm going to help in hand. Because I think a helping hand, Moonguy's Beam will get the Tapu Fini here. Um, and I feel like the Rayquaza, if anything switches out, it wants to reset those Intimidate drops. It's not really doing anything in the field right now. Ooh, it's staying in. Huh. That surprises me. That really does surprise me. It does protect though, so I mean, it's kind of the same. But if we're able to get the Fini here, that makes it a little more awkward for my opponent because those Intimidate drops are stuck on that Rayquaza now and it's already Dragon Ascended, so its defensive capabilities are shot as well. We are going to have to cut this Z move, um, but hopefully, help in hand, it is going to be enough to get the Tapu Fini. But and more than enough to get the Tapu Fini, which is ideal. So there's that Pokemon gone out of the equation. No Heal Pulse support or anything like that coming out from it going forward. Still going to have this Xerneas to worry about, of course, um, which isn't going to be the easiest thing to deal with by any means, especially if it does get the Geomancy up here. Uh, I do want to get rid of this Rayquaza though, uh, so I'm just going to go for the Moonguys Beam and I'm going to actually bring in, I bring in Volcarona um, to start with, or Kyogre. Kyogre is probably better because then we've got the slower. Uh, water spout to get off. Hitmon top's not really helping us out that much right now, so I'd rather just get the Kyogre onto the field and utilize these trick room turns while I can. The Rayquaza might go for an extreme speed here, last ditch attempt to get some damage off. Um, gone for the double protect, but does fail, thankfully. We did not need that going off this turn. Moonguys Beam will be enough to get the Ray here. And whether or not we see the Geomancy from the Xerneas, like if it was me, I'd probably click the Geomancy button because it's a last ditch attempt to try and, uh, yeah, see out this game. And we know how good Xerneas can be. We can't whirlwind it out anymore uh, because it's the last Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field. Thing is, though, uh, a Photon Geyser and a Water Spot is still going to do a phenomenal amount of damage to the Xerneas. It's going to try and stall out these Trick Room turns, though. That's my feeling. Um... And how many Trick Room turns we've got left? Because potentially it protects here. If we've got two... Hmm. So I don't think we switch around yet. We go for the... Just, I think we go for double attacking. Yeah, Water Spout, Photon Geyser. And I think maybe... Yeah. Like, if that was our last turn of Trick Room, I think the play here would have been switching top and Photon Geyser. And then the next time we get that guaranteed trick room up. But it's going to be a bit more difficult to do that now. Um, but we'll still go for it. Uh, we're going to lose our trick room for sure. But hopefully, like, oh, it's gone double protect, but it does fail. Okay, well, I mean, this is even better for us, to be honest, because the trick room does end, but um, we're going to get free damage onto Xerneas, which is the big thing. I think you need to attack that turn with Xerneas, honestly, because you should take... Man, yeah, just it's taking too much damage now. Um, 
Okay, and we'll try for a trick room. I don't think we'll get it off. Um, but we'll go for that. Ooh, is it even worth going for Origin Pulse? We're probably better off just going for an Ice Beam just to guarantee the, the knockout here and pick up a victory. So there's the Dazzling Gleam. It will take down Dawn Wings. Oh, it doesn't. And then the Ice Beam. It's going to be more than enough against our two powerhouses. So that's good. We're off to a good start. Five wins, four losses. Can we make it six wins, four losses to end positive this week? That's what we're aiming for. That's what we said all week. That's what we said yesterday. I'm feeling good about going into this last one and let's not regret not activating bonus buttons today. That's the big thing. Um, no regrets on doing it. So whatever happens, we're going to finish neutral this week, which has got to be... Got to be a bonus. It's got to be a success with this sort of team. So we'll continue on. Let's go on to Crosma Vision 2. Because I feel like getting the party started with that track is just so good. <laughs> and you guys are like, oh my god, I'm switching off now. I hate that track. You played far too much. I'm sorry. Sorry. We'll be into Sword and Shield soon. And we'll have a flurry of new tracks. Brand new tracks that I can just spam at you even more. And I don't want, I want, I won't spam them even more, but um, yeah, so let's see if we can finish six and four, and it might be the first time, I don't know if we've finished like that good in a week, have we? Maybe, maybe, I don't know, hopefully we can, I'm feeling good, depends who we come up against, it'd be great to have a really high rated opponent as well and then come out victorious, and, and that would be like the icing on the cake, wouldn't it, it would be like I sent on the kick. Anyway, it's taken a little bit longer to find that opponent than I would have liked, so I'm just going to slice it here. Oh, well, no, I'm not. I'm not. We've got Mr. South Korea coming in right now, so we'll hop straight into team preview. We need to take this one seriously. It looks <laughs> it's exactly the same team. So he's like, he's his mate sitting next to him. He's like, I created a QR code, and uh, you can use this one, and uh, I'll use my main one, and uh, we'll sit next to each other and battle. I know exactly what this guy's going to do. I don't think we deviate too much from what we did in that last match, to be honest. Uh, I think the, the him on top, the Kyogre, was a nice lead for us. Um, I don't know if we're going to get the opportunities like we got on our last match, though. That's the thing. Necrozma's great, and I think rather than the Volcarona, the Lorantis might be a better be a better option although the Volcarona would be better in a situation where the Xerneas does get set up um, that's the, that's my only qualm um, we'll go Lorantis we'll go Lorantis this one and we'll see how we get on in this one today to finish us up today my opponent just taking their time Discussing strategies with their friend that we've just played <laughs> with the exact same team. I can't believe we've got like double X ray here. What's going on? Is this like, is this the trend that going into worlds? What people are leaning towards the old X ray? It did so well in the early format, didn't it? And uh, now it's kind of making its way back in. I think it's a, a really strong call, but whether or not it'd be the one that takes the world championships or not, I think you need a completely different build around it. Serena, Serena's the one. It's always the one. Um, okay. Here we go. Let's get into it today. Let's see if we can finish positive, positive. It's not gonna be easy. Never gonna be easy, but we can do it. We believe. Flinch Squad believes. Okay. There's that Amoongus. There's Azonius. <laughs> this is where. This is where that uh, that little Volcarona would have been super handy. Um. Yeah, okay. This is this is really tricky. Cause what do we do? Do we let the do we let the Xerneas Geomancy and fake out the Amoongus and water spout? I'm gonna do that actually, yeah. I'm gonna fake out the Amoongus. We've got Y Guard that we might be able to utilize the next turn. And then we still got Origin Pulse as well. Oh, it could all go wrong. But it might be alright. It might be alright, I think. Yeah, oh, Xenia's protecting. So at least we're getting free damage onto this Amoongus now. That's the big thing. Uh, and we've got help in hand. Oh, no. Amoongus protecting. Double protect. Just wants to get around the fake out. That's the thing. We do have help in hand, Water Spout. We could use this next turn. Um, 
It's just whether or not the Kyogre gets put to sleep, which would be... It's not ideal. Let's see how much damage we can do, though. Getting damage onto the Xerneas is the main thing. As a gym, I see we can't really prevent it, especially without Volcarona here. And even with Volcarona in this situation, it's difficult, because you kind of have to expend a turn, like, getting rid of the Amoongus before you can Whirlwind. Uh, that's why the red card on it's like really useful and it would be good in this situation where we can just switch it in the next turn take the dazzle and or moonblast potentially and um, get around it that way see what the helping hand war spot does man it does some nice damage to that Xerneas though doesn't it uh, sport into Kyogre yeah hmm. it's whether or not we see Xerneas go moonblast or not that's the thing I think uh, we'll go wide guard and we'll see if we can wake up and go Origin Pulse. If we can wake up and get around a Dazzling Gleam here, that would be incredible. Amoongus withdrawing. Makes sense. Rayquaza are going to hit the field. Oh. Come on, Dazzle. That's what we want to see. The dazzle. Dazzle, Dazzle, Dazzle. Come on. That's into top though, okay. Gets rid of our Intimidate support. Yeah. And Kyogre staying asleep. Hmm. Uh, we really need our Trick Room up, don't we? We really need our Trick Room up. If we can get Trick Room up, it does help us. The Amoongus becomes way more of a pain though to deal with. Um. You concentrate down on the Dawn Wings, I'm pretty sure here. We'll go Origin Pulse. And by some means, maybe Kyogre wakes up, gets the Origin Pulse off, knocks the Xerneas out, does some nice damage to that Rayquaza. And then Dawn Wings is in a nice position to try and close this one up. I don't know. It's, it's, it's tricky because I think a Dazzling Gleam and Dragon Ascent from Ray into Kyogre is probably going to be enough. But if you if you worry about the trick room being set up, then you go after the Dawn Wings here because the Kyogre is kind of out of commission at the minute with being asleep. But it's an easy target; it's a guaranteed one you can get the, the attacks off into. So it would make sense to go for that anyway. There's a dazzling gleam. Okay, Dragon Ascent. Okay, come on, Kyogre. Ah, we needed you to wake up, Kyogre. Come on. Um, okay, we're definitely going to see that come out now. Do we just sacrifice Lorantis? Maybe. And go for that Origin Pulse once again. Kyogre should take a Dazzling Gleam. And I think you need to go Dazzling Gleam, Dragon Ascent here. But we need Kyogre to wake up. If Kyogre doesn't wake up, then Amoongus has done its job. Uh, or we could just see a Moonblast. Yeah, and that's going to be enough. And that is game. That is game, but... Okay, so we're 5 and 5 pretty much going into the end of this one. But we are like 18 minutes in, so it does mean we've got like one more... We've got room for one more game today. I'm not just saying that either. We've definitely got room for one more game. Um, so we've got... Uh, Dawn Wings left against these two. It's not going to happen, is it? It really isn't. We can't take a combination of attacks, so... Quickly forfeit, and we'll move on to our next one and see if we can. We've still got a chance to finish positive. We've got a chance to finish negative as well. But I'm feeling confident that we're not going to do that. We'll say good game to my opponent. So we faced, hopefully we'll face a different team as well. Like, I don't know. I don't mind facing the same team. Like, it's all right. But if we <laughs> imagine facing three of the Zoom team, the same squad, it gets a little bit boring. But it just shows how well... If the team's well played, then the difference it can make, um, you know, when you're more versed with a team, then, may then maybe not as well practiced with it. It can perform extremely well, especially when you can identify those those areas in team preview. I my opponent identifying how good the Amoongus can be in that match and how kind of weak we are to it as well, which is a common common theme of these roulette teams, I swear. Uh, we're very, very sleep weak a lot of the time, and I think that's because we just don't have the text that you would normally like. The, the normal text that you look at straight away are always going to be things that like help you shut down problems that really give your team loads of issues. But we got an next opponent, Hugo, straight into it. So hopefully this will be the last one, and this is the one where we're going to finish positive. So we'll get into team preview. 
Right, Hugo running a team of Swampert, Dialga, Kyogre, Incineroar, Jinx, and Ferrothorn. So, probably heavy Trick Room uh, based team. You're going to be looking at Mega Swampert here, I think. Trick Room from Dialga. Going to have uh, Dry Skin on that Jinx, which is going to be difficult to deal with. Um, Ferrothorn there for the Trick Room, uh, which is, again, going to be a bit tricky to deal with. But we do have Lorantis, and, and I think if the Trick Room does go up, Lorantis can do like an incredible job against against the team that we're facing down against um so i don't mind my opponent going for the trick room to be honest um yeah i'm gonna lead him on top necrozma i think we bring lorantis and do we bring kyoga or azumarill hmm Tricky, tricky, tricky. Like Azumarill could be better, to be honest. But then I think Kyogre just generally because of its restricted power. It's going to be the better one. So we'll finish up with the Kyogre here. And we'll see if we can we can eke this one out. So five wins, five losses. Down to the last one. Today so will be the last one uh, for the week before we move on to a new team next week. So let's see. If we can put this team in the Hall of Fame of finishing positive on the road to roulette. Rank. Uh, I can't even speak. Road to rank roulette series. It'll go up on the wall. I frame this team. <laughs> if it is, I don't think we. I like. I don't know. It's gonna be tricky, but I, there's a clear way for us to win this. I think. Um, the Kyogre coming out with that Jinx isn't ideal um, because a fake out is a massive problem from that Jinx straight off the bat. Is just gonna fake out a hit on top. I mean, we will get a trick room up, but it just it just uh, begs for the um, the Ferrothorn to come in the next turn, which makes it even more difficult. We kind of need to keep our hit on top around for that. Uh, do we bring in Lorantis then in trick room? Because I expect my opponent to go at water spout. Lorantis be able to take it. And I don't see the Jinx going for an attack outside of Fake Out here. It might go for Lovely Kiss, maybe. There's the Fake Out. Yeah. Water Spout. Both Pokemon should take this. Jesus. Okay. Now, the Jinx is probably sashed. That would be my like guess but whether or not it stays in or not is it is another thing i'm gonna definitely leaf blade the kyogre um and we'll go for the moon guys beam into the jinx could have z moved into it in case that ferrothorn does hit the field but if the jinx is sash like we kind of expect it to be and it does stay in and attack the lorantis that would not be so good for us Oh, Jinx withdrawing. Ferrothorn? Yeah. So at least we get damage onto the Ferrothorn. That's the, the big thing here. That's why it might have been a better idea to go for uh, the Z move there. Uh, to make sure that we get a little bit more damage onto it. And we can deal with it a little bit better. But it's it's not the worst. It's not the best either, of course. Um, but we will get some nice damage onto it here. It does reveal the Leech Seed. Um... I don't know if a Leaf Blade will get the Kyogre though, that's the big thing. Um, we can definitely go for it. Uh, and I think switching in him on top is not a bad idea here. Just to get that Intimidate onto the Ferrothorn in case it does have something like knock off and tries to go for it onto the Lorantis. Um, so at least we are going to potentially stick around to get this Leaf Blade off onto the Kyogre. Whether or not we get the knockout onto the Kyogre is another thing. I'm not, I don't really know if we, we, we're capable of it. Depends on the build of the Kyogre. And this sort of team you'd think it's a bit more bulkier. But it's not actually sticking around. So it's going to switch out. Retreat for later as the Dialga hits the field. Which isn't bad. Uh, hopefully the Ferrothorn goes for a Gyro Ball into the Lorantis. That, okay, it's just going to protect here. Um, we'll get a Leaf Blade off into the Dialga. Doing nothing. Nothing. Um, and we can fake out the Dialga and superpower the Ferrothorn. 
Or we could just double. I could just cross combat the the Dialga just to get damage off onto it. To be honest, we might lose Lorantis doing this, but we should be able to get the Ferrothorn now with the superpower. And that that Ferrothorn is the one thing that's kind of stopping and holding up our Trick Room mode anyway. So uh, even though we're running out of Trick Room turns. Dialga protecting. Okay, we're going to see the, the Ferrothorn get an attack off. Leech Seed into the top. That's fine. Hopefully, like I say, the superpower is enough to get the Ferrothorn. Oh, it's not. Oh, come on. Mm. Oh, we need that. We need that berry to activate as well on the Lorantis. That's the other thing. Um. Ferrothorn is definitely going to protect us next turn. It gives us a free opportunity to go super power cross combat into Dialga, I think. Depending on the speed of the Dialga, though, I feel like it probably... Mm, we might be better off going help in hand super power into the Dialga. And a help in hand plus one super power should get the Dialga from here with Lorantis. You would hope so. Ferrothorn withdrawing. Yeah, makes sense. Jinx coming back onto the field. Ooh, Dialga gonna switch out. I'm gonna see Kyogre coming. It's gonna take a helping hand plus one superpower, so. <sighs> we don't, don't mind that too much. This Jinx, though, is a bit of a pain. We needed the berry activated on the Lorantis, which is a, the big thing. Depends how much this does. I don't expect it to pick up a knockout, though. It does decent enough damage, uh, honestly. And there's some more Leech Seed damage. As the dimensions turn back to normal. Um, okay. Protect Lorantis. Can we get Kyogre onto the field now? Hmm. Or could we just go for a close combat into the Kyogre? Maybe better than switching Kyogre in, to be honest. Unless we see a Psychic from the Jinx into the, the Hitmon top, but I imagine we probably see... Ah, uh, no, we do. We just see a Psy Shock. This will probably take us down. Oh, we survive! But, the Eject Button activating. <laughs> okay, I mean, Hitmon top gets to live another day. That might be a bit of a lifesaver for us later on. Um, it's really, what do we want to bring in? Do we want to lose our Trick Room mode, or do we want to bring Kyogre in, it's going to take a bit of damage along the way. Um, hmm. Let's bring in Necrozma. I'd rather lose Necrozma, I think, at this this point of the match, because it's so low health, it's not really doing very much. We're probably going to see a Water Spout or an Origin Pulse from the Kyogre. Yeah. And it's, honestly, I feel better about Necrozma taking that than... I can't get taken it. But we're losing, we're really losing ways to deal with this Jinx. That's the biggest problem, I think, for us right now. Um, has it got Ice Beam? It's got Fake Out, Sun Shock. It's got to have Ice Beam. It's got to have Ice Beam. Bring in Kyogre. Just if we switch out Lorantis, we kind of we lose top, and Lorantis is just back in that same position again. Where I just don't, I just don't see us having a way to deal with the Jinx in the rain. It's just not going to happen, is it? We just pinned a bit too much, I think, in this match. Um, I mean, we could try and go for a knockoff into the Jinx, and then go for the Water Spout. And hope that our Kyogre is faster than their Kyogre. But yeah, there's the Ice Beam. Yeah. More than enough. I think the Jinx is going to be the thing that like un unpicks our team here. And yeah, their Kyogre faster than ours. Okay. I mean, the Water Spout's going to be enough to get the opposing Kyogre. But we've still got a Ferrothorn, a Dialga and this pesky jinx to deal with which we just i just don't think we've got any way to deal with so we're gonna 
We're going to finish negative. We took the risk to play that extra game, but I hope at the end of the day you guys have enjoyed it. Um, ah, so close. I don't know. I don't know. Azumarill may have been good here. Like a Sap Sipper, Azumarill could have been good in this match. But then again, it's so difficult against something like Kyogre where you're going to take a water spout regardless of what you do. It's just, it's just very difficult to kind of get around that sort of damage, whatever you are, even resisting it or not. Um, yeah, we can fake out and, I mean, Origin Pulse, but we're not going to be doing really anything to anything on that side of the field. Fake out to the Jinx. This is where Sucker Punch would have been good on our hit on top. But it's too late, because the Dragon Pulse is going to do enough. Uh, the Origin Pulse is just going to heal the Jinx. And, um... Ah, I'm sad about this. Finishing negative again. Again. But it was close. It was close. We had some good games this week. Uh, the team, it's probably not been my favourite out of all of the roulette teams. Um, but it's been a really fun one, nonetheless. Um, I want to see how much an Ice Beam does to a Jinx. And hopefully my opponent can take us down this turn. Come on. Reveal Thunder. Psy Shock Thunder. Or oh, Lovely Kiss. Go for it. Jinx is like, Jinx is seriously good. Like, if you've got Kyogre... Might not be a good roulette Pokemon, because we kind of need the combination Jinx Kyogre if we're going to play it. I guess just still strong, strong. What's the ice beam doing? I mean, it's not too bad. Jinx is pretty weak, though. But look at that. Easy. <laughs> Healing up. Okay, this is going to be the last turn. Good game to my opponent. Thank you all so very much for coming by for the episode today. I do hope you've enjoyed it uh, we're finishing with five wins six losses which is a little bit unfortunate uh, we're very close to finishing positive we should have stopped it the last game and then we would have finished neutral for this week but where's the fun in that we've always got to take the risks and that's what we've done good game to hugo and to all our opponents this week but make sure you do get over to our uh, community post Nominate your Pokemon for next week and we'll be back with hopefully another fantastic team to take on to our, our, our Road to Ranked Roulette series with. Um, and maybe one of these weeks we'll have an absolutely fantastic week where we finish super positive and everything goes smoothly well and we can get all the memes out. But it's just getting that combination. We've got to pray to the wheel to throw something good out for us next week. So without further ado, have an amazing weekend, whatever you're up to, my friends. And I will see you all for another episode on Monday. So until then, take care and bye-bye.